Hey everyone, it's Berry. The holidays are rapidly approaching. It's actually snowing outside as I'm filming, so that's making it feel even more impending. So I wanted to share some of my favorite art supply gift ideas for you last minute shoppers. These range from beginner to professional to even some unique and unusual items that are either handmade or just really interesting. These are all items that I have tried personally and can recommend, and while they may lean towards painting supplies, stick around because there are items to suit artists of all kinds. I'm primarily a gouache artist, so you know I have to mention my two favorite gouache sets. First is the affordable 24 set from Arteza. I like this set as opposed to the 60-something set that Arteza also sells, because when you're beginning, having too many colors can lead to decision paralysis. The 24 set is the perfect amount to fill out a palette and have room to learn color mixing along the way. It's also extremely well priced for having so many colors. The next set I recommend is Holbein's 5 Mixing Color Set. Holbein are a professional brand, so these are a bit more expensive, but they are well worth it. My set's a bit old and I've totally used the white up, but this is the set that I actually learned gouache with. With just these three colors, plus black and white, you can mix almost every color in the color wheel, so it's a fantastic learning tool for color mixing. If you may indulge me in a teeny bit of self-promo, I sell prints, stickers, pins, and more in my online store. They make great stocking stuffers for art lovers who want to adorn their spaces with bright, glitchy, and surreal works. I also wrote a creative productivity workbook called A Motion to Make, a guide to the process of being a creative individual. Going into the new year, and especially coming out of this one, it can be hard to get back into the swing of creating. And my book aims to lift you up and help you discover your own version of creativity, with 10 interactive worksheets and 8 chapters going through each phase of creation. You can find everything I just mentioned at madamberry.com shop, and you can even read the first chapter of my workbook totally free in the link in the description. Moving on to watercolors, my next recommendation is the Jane Davenport's Brights palette. This is an affordable watercolor set full of, as the name would suggest, some of the brightest pigments I've tried in a watercolor pan set. Anybody who loves painting with vibrant and punchy colors is sure to love this set. All of the watercolor pans are easily activated and highly saturated, and it comes with two purple tones, which is a notoriously difficult color to mix. These paints are meant for sketchbooks rather than finished works of art, as the pigments aren't the most light fast. So these are best for crafters, scrapbookers, mixed media artists, and beginners who are looking for an affordable set. If you're shopping for somebody who's looking for more high quality pigments, instead I recommend something like the Daniel Smith watercolor tubes. I do believe Daniel Smith makes half pan sets as well, but I've only ever tried their tube watercolors. Daniel Smith makes some fascinating and unique pigment mixes, like their acidic looking green gold, the rich and deep rose of ultramarine, or the ever popular granulating moon glow. I find I gravitate towards Daniel Smith for those sorts of pigments because they have properties that set them apart from other paints. The last paint set that I want to talk about is a handmade set from Yuli. In my next video, I'll go more in depth with these, but these are holographic and color shifting paints. These are some of the most unique paints I have ever used, and I can't get enough of them. If you're shopping for somebody who's always looking for the next unique and interesting supply, these are sure to tickle their fancy. Plus, Yuli sells dot cards, so you can try out a ton of their paints without having to commit to full sets or pans. Oh, my candy cane just broke. Moving on from paints, I want to talk about painting surfaces and substrates. For an interesting spin, instead of painting on paper, I've been enjoying these aqua boards by Ampersand. These are museum quality archival hardboards that have been coated in watercolor ground and pre-cut into a variety of sizes. You can get a four pack of these small square boards for an exceptionally reasonable price. So they're a fun experiment and possibly a way to really step up the display quality of your watercolor or gouache paintings. At some point, I want to do a full review of these boards, so make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you don't miss my future videos. This next item is something that I just received and I haven't had a chance to fully test out yet, but it excites me so much that I needed to share it. These are handmade papers from an Australian company called Dodgy Paper. They make papers with fully recycled paper pulp, including product wrappers, old newsprint, and comics for that real pop arty feel. They have some really interesting and unique paper selections, and the ones that I picked up include this paper that has gold flake inclusions and this one that glows in the dark. I can't wait to film a painting for you on this paper. 
Since these come from Australia, they do take a while to arrive, and I would recommend getting tracking on your package. They're also fairly soft papers, so they might need to be sealed with something before being used with paint, but they work great with softer dry mediums and also with screen printing and stamping, which means they work really well for my next recommendation, Lino Cut sets. I got really into Lino Cut for a bit last year, and I keep meaning to get back into it, but it's such a fun and soothing activity. If you've got somebody in your life who likes oddly satisfying things and can be trusted with sharp objects, Carving away at a block of lino will be right up their alley. Small lino sets like these are pretty affordable. I also like to combine lino with my watercolor paintings for a bit of mixed media layering. The last item on my list is something that I used for a month straight for a series of cyberpunk ink illustrations, and that's these fluorescent inks by Dale Rowney. They come in this set of six bombastically vibrant colors that react under UV blacklight, and they're great for somebody who's looking to get into weird and experimental art. What art supplies are you wishing for this holiday? Let me know down below. Personally, I'm really interested in those pastel acrylic gouache sets that Turner makes. Give this video a like for me, and if you want to see more of those neon inks that I just mentioned, check out my review video right here. Links to everything that I mentioned in this video will be in the description. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.